In Creo Parametric, the dihedral angle tool is used to tell if you have tangency between different surfaces in your model. Let me show you how to use it. In this part, I have a network of curves. I've got an ellipse here in the middle. Then I have a circle on one end. I've mirrored that to be on the other end as well. We have a spline curve acting as the spine between the three and another spline curve connecting the three at an angle of 90 degrees from the first one. And that one as well is mirrored. Let's create a boundary blend between this network of curves. I will go to the model tab. Here we have the boundary blend command and I will select my first curve in the first direction. Here you can see it listed in there. Let's hold down the control key to select the second curve in the first direction. If you take a look at the ends, right now it's just connecting the endpoints with a straight line. Let's activate our second direction curves collector and I want to select the segment of this curve. I'm going to tap the right mouse button to query select to the divided segment. Now hold down the control key and same thing. I'm going to query select with the tapping of the right mouse button to get the second portion. And for the third curve in the second direction, once again, I will query select just to get that divided segment. So there we have our first surface. That looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And that way we have created our first curve. Now let's create our second curve. And I want to make sure that I'm selecting the curve and not the surface. Normally, I would select the edge of the surface when creating my second curve, but I want to force this to not be tangent in the worst way possible. So that's why I'm going to hide the first boundary blend. Let's create a new boundary blend. I'm just going to select the spine and the side curve. And again, we're going to get that straight connection between the ends of the curves. Let's hit the check mark. And so there I have boundary blend two. Let's bring back boundary blend one. And I'm going to hide the spine just to make sure that I don't accidentally select it in the dihedral angle tool. All right, let's go to the analysis tab. And I'm going to measure dihedral angle. And here we have the dialog box for it. Here we're going to select the edge that we want to use. And I will select this particular edge over here and it is measuring the dihedral angle. Right now my scale is really big. Let's change this to a scale of one. And it's using a quality of 100. But first, let's explain what exactly dihedral angle does. The dihedral angle is going to create a normal along the edge on the first surface, and then an, a normal vector along the edges of the second surface, and then it'll measure the angle between those normal vectors. If you have tangency, that dihedral angle is going to be zero or very close to zero. Based on the nature of the calculation, sometimes it'll be a smidgen above zero. Here we can see that our minimum dihedral angle is 20 and some change. Our maximum is 44. So we definitely do not have tangency between these two surfaces in this case. In addition to the scale which you can manipulate, you also have the ability to change the quality. And the quality basically measures how many points along the edge you are calculating the dihedral angle. And you'll notice as I slide the quality back and forth, the minimum dihedral angle is changing. So for that reason, when you can, you want to use the maximum quality. You also have some choices for the style. The default is to create a smooth curve between the spikes in the dihedral angle. You could also choose to have straight lines between the spikes, but in this particular case, it is not making a difference. I can try by crank down the quality, you might start to see that we're getting more straight lines between there. Let's go back to the smooth and crank up the quality. You could also display just the spikes without any curve between them. From this drop down list, you could just do a quick analysis where you're just looking at the values in this dialog box. You could also choose to save the analysis and that enables something called 
persistent display. In other words, you can see the values on the computer screen, and that is convenient while you are modeling to see, to see changes to certain measures of interest. And the other choice from here is to create this as a feature in the model. If you create this as a feature, you have the ability to create parameters within this feature. In this case, you could create parameters for the maximum dihedral angle and the minimum dihedral angle. This can be used later in feasibility and optimization studies, and also if you have MathCAD worksheets connected to your model. So again, you can make this very parametric. It's a great way of building design intent into your models. But in this particular case, I'm just gonna create this as a quick analysis. In other words, as soon as I click the OK button, the measurement is going to go away. Now let's take a look at changing the model. Again, we had dihedral angle between a value of about 20 going to about 44. Let's select this surface in here and we are going to edit definition from the mini toolbar. Right now, I don't have any control on the boundary conditions. You get these circles over the boundary conditions and you can right click over them to get a pop-up menu that tells you what the boundary condition is. Right now, it is free. You could choose it to be curvature continuous, normal to some entity, or tangent, and that's what we want in this particular case. I'm going to go to the Constraints tab. Right now it's tangent to the datum plane front. That's not what I want. I want it to be tangent to the other boundary blend here. So I will select it and then hit the check mark. And it's actually going to adjust the shape. If you take a look, whereas we had a straight connection between the endpoints before, you can see that it is now curved. Let's edit definition one more time just to show you some other stuff. If you go to the Constraints tab, you can add something called Side Curve Influence. When I check this, take a look at what happens right around over here. When I click that, you can see that it is being influenced by the curves for the circle, and in the middle, it's influenced by the ellipse over here. You can also change the stretch value. In other words, how long do you want to extend tangency along that surface? We could choose a value of two, we could choose a value of three, and you can see how it's altering the shape. Let's change this back to a value of one and turn off the side curve influence. Now we will hit the check mark and we have our surface created. The shape has changed a little bit. Now let's go back to the dihedral angle tool and I'm going to select this edge in the model. And we can see now the dihedral angle is a value of zero. The maximum dihedral is going to a value of 0 0.043. So again, based on the nature of the calculation, sometimes it's gonna be a smidgen over zero, but and still be tangent. That's what we have in this particular case. All right, let's click the OK button out of here. I'm gonna take this boundary blend and I'm going to suppress it. Now we're gonna create a boundary blend using the side curves. Let's go to the model tab, boundary blend, and actually this time I wanna make sure that this is visible. I wanna make sure that I am grabbing the curve and not the edge of the boundary blend. If I was modeling this for real, I would want to grab the edge. That will help improve the boundary conditions. But I want to try to make this kind of like worst case possible. So that's why I'm selecting the curve instead of the edge of the surface. And let's hold down the control key for the curves in the first direction. Let's activate our second direction curves collector. And again, I'm going to query select to this particular curve. Hold down the control key, query select and control again and query select. And that way we have our curves in the second direction. Right now I have not turned tangency on. We go to the constraints, we can see that it is free along all four borders. Let's hit the check mark over here and bring back our boundary blend over here. Let's go to the analysis tab and dihedral angle. 
and let's measure the dihedral angle over here. And now we're seeing that we have dihedral going from zero to 2.0491. So again, because it is above zero and by a big amount, that means that we do not have tangency here. And let's crank up the scale. Let's put a nice curve in between them. And let's use a scale. Let's use something that you can see. Let's use a value of 20. So there you can see that, again, we have dihedral angle changing significantly between the different surfaces. This time, I will save the analysis so that we have the persistent display. If you want to see your saved analyses, you can do it from this dialog box. You can use this to toggle the display on and off. And you can also double click on it in order to bring up the original dialog box that was used to create it. You could also use the pencil icon from here for doing the same thing. Okay, so now we have the dihedral angle displayed on the computer screen. Let's now go to the boundary blend that we created, edit definition. Once again, I'm gonna right click over this and choose tangent. What do I want it to be tangent to? Well, let's make sure that we are, hold on a second. Let me click in the collector and select the surface that we want it to be tangent to. Now we can hit the check mark to complete the feature. And you'll notice the display pretty much went away. It must have changed its value a lot. Let's go to saved analysis and double click on it. And in this particular situation, you can see that the minimum dihedral angle is zero and the maximum is 0 0.02, just like before. So again, you could have a value that is slightly bigger than zero, but still have tangency. You're just looking for very low values over here. Let's click the OK button and close out of there. One last thing to show you, let's go back to the ellipse over here and edit definition. I'm gonna change this value over here to make it closer to the size of the side circles and hit the check mark. So that adjusted the values. Now when we go to the dihedral angle, now because the geometry is closer, you can see that the minimum and the maximum dihedral angles are a value of zero on both sides. So again, the nature of your geometry has, has a huge influence on the calculation of the dihedral angle. But again, this is a great tool for measuring tangency between surfaces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, click that subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.